Oh, Leo. It, you know, it hurts me to have to give you bad news, but it is such a pleasure after all that bad news to be able to turn around and actually give you some good news. And the astrology is definitely on your side this week. We're gonna get into it. Leo, this is your weekly, um, weekly tarot card reading and, excuse me, astrology summary. It's an energy reading first and foremost. So it is for Leo, sun, moon, and rising sign. Just apply it to where it applies in your life. Um, it will resonate differently for all of you. So wherever it resonates, yes, it is correct. Sometimes you might wanna try your moon sign video or your rising sign video um, simply because it will resonate more with you, more with your natal chart. You know, it's not like everybody's always watching their natal chart at every single second some usually so the moon sign or the rising sign might relate better to you so go check them out there's always an extended reading leo that i hope you will join me for and i will attach the links to the end of this video so you can click right on it and get right to it as well as in the description box below it's always there and i'll pin it to the top of the comment section as well um leo thank you so much for how far you've come with me um, we've come a long way over the past almost four years and I am throwing a huge celebration party to celebrate our milestone of 100,000 subscribers. The date is May 13th and the place is Austin, Texas and all of the information is on the community page, on my website www.bornwithoutboundariestarot.com as well as my Facebook page. You can find it everywhere and I'll even attach the ticket links above. You can join me in person in Austin or you can be, join me virtually for the virtual experience. It's a three hour long event and I can't wait to share that moment with you. If you really love my content, Leo, please check out my second YouTube channel. It's called Astrology Motivation, where I go live Monday through Friday. I do a general tarot card reading and we can actually live chat. So I hope to see you there as well. Let's get into the astrology first. Um, yeah, let's get into the astrology first. First of all, you're in a really good position this week because there's a stellium of activity in Aries and it's major. You have Venus conjuncting Jupiter conjunct Chiron. And Venus dropped in last week and everything in Aries is basically trying to one of your natal suns or the other. So right now in the beginning of this week, Venus is trying to the Leo the, the Leo suns that are say if you if your natal sun is between zero and ten degrees Leo, so you're born in the beginning of Leo season. Usually Leo's July Leos, um, you guys have your natal sun trying to Venus. So there's a lot of harmony and happiness that comes, not only, it just comes with quality, it comes with being appreciated, it comes with being loving and being very romantic and falling in love and sort of like good things happening and feel good things happening. A real sense of ease when it comes to your partnerships and your finances. Now, by the end of the week, Venus, who moves pretty quickly, will move into um, Aries too, and that will be trying to Leo too. So if your, if your natal sun falls between 10 and 20 degrees Leo, um, now, now by the end of the week, I would say, I think it's by Tuesday, yeah, you'll start to feel the effects of Venus's love and glow, but you guys have more because the same time this happens, the moon is going to be sextile. The moon is going to conjunct Mars and Mars is in Gemini sextile to your natal suns as well. It is not a sextile to Leo ones, but it's sextile to your natal suns. So especially those of you born between 15 and 20 degrees Leo, you're gonna get uber impact now because Venus is conjunct Jupiter, conjunct Chiron at 13 degrees Aries. And at about 16 degrees Gemini, the moon is going to sextile Mars and it's the moon is going to conjunct Mars and it's sextile to your natal sun. This is a fabulous, fantastic, romantic week. Very sensual. You'll know exactly what to say. Loving words, caring relationships, breakthroughs when it comes to romance and finance. This is something like you've been wanting to hear or you've been wanting to happen to you or or it's just, it's like it's about, it's about damn time. I'm just gonna say it. I'm just gonna say it. 
It's about to time. So when we get to about Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, especially, these days, especially for Leo 2s, are just going to be so really beautiful for you, especially with that sextile to Mars in, in, in Gemini. So you'll be able to take action or somebody's going to be able to say something to you, tell you something that is going to make your heart so rewarded and so happy. Or it's like Gemini also rules education, right? So learning, it's like, it's like you figured something out, you've learned it, or you learn a piece of information that was missing and it's going to make your heart extremely happy. Okay, let's get into the cards. Um, what was I going to say? peace with the past okay the sun so the sun is the sun is in Pisces now overall the fact that the sun is in Pisces is going to impact you in a very romantic loving way too because sun in Pisces is very intuitive it's very psychic it's very loving it's very romantic and it's very creative so for the next month you guys are sort of floating on a cloud if you will the cloud of the 12th house nebula right that that sense of you may not know where you are, but you don't need to because you're floating and it's just so happy. And there's there's a lot of creative inspiration and creative energy here that you can really get a chance to express. Happy birthday, Doug Denny, that you normally don't get to express. Um, so understand that that's sort of the overarching energy that you're experiencing, but then you have these particular these particular favorable aspects trine and sextile to your natal suns throughout the week and it's just yes really beautiful energy now for those of you who are at the end of leo season your natal sun is still in opposition to current saturn and so there are problems and disruptions by authority figures rules laws legalities if someone's riding you hard but that's been there for a while so it's at least something that you're already stable you're st that is stabilized in a way and you're already dealing with and not too long from now saturn is going to drop into pisces and i tell you everything changes then because saturn was in capricorn and then saturn moved into aquarius and it rules both of those it's the traditional ruler of both of those signs pisces is not its comfort zone so it's going to make dynamic changes to the way it goes about things. And I'm, I'm eager to know. And I feel like you guys are getting a little bit of the peace prize beforehand. Now, what do the cards say? I mean, stop. Could, you, could it get better? Can you say the coins are dropping in? It's raining money. Like the coins are falling. This is wealth, it's happiness and abundance. But there's something else about the, the Ten of Pentacles that you need to know. The Ten of Pentacles is also about love and happiness and fulfillment at home. A stable house, it could be buying a house, it could be selling a house, great time to sell a house, great money. You'll make fantastic money, great offers. Um, but this is a time when you, it's right to invest in something. It's okay to make big purchases. It's, it's like the time when you're doing it to level up. There's stability behind the decisions that you're making and a sense of home, a sense of togetherness, a sense of you're not doing this by yourself, that you feel real harmony and oneness and stability within your family. So there's a lot of abundance here coming in. Now, for some of you, it's just money. And that's okay too. Seven of Cups is here, but with this kind of energy, it just feels like you have a lot of choices and you also are very confused. Now that's that's the effects of Pisces on the sun. And it's like, listen, your confusion is, you're gonna have to trust your intuition and your faith in Pisces. That's how Pisces makes up its mind. It doesn't really have a mind. It has intuition and psyche. So you're going to have to trust your intuition and you're gonna have to trust your faith faith is big time you know where does where where is your heart pulling you it's not about your emotions it's your heart as in your god space where is it pulling you there are seemingly a lot of choices and maybe a lot of distractions a lot of revelry could be a lot of you know partying or some stuff like that but i think that there's just a sense of you feel like you're in a dream there is a lot of burdens here that's coming up and seven of pentacles so a sense of not being able to figure out why certain things are so hard or could not move forward but here's the good news you're able to find a way forward or you're able to make a decision or or 
if for nothing else but a leap of faith, you are able to to take action. Take action even though you're not certain about something, but this is a, something that's been weighing on you for a while and you haven't been able to get over it. No matter how much you've tried, no matter how much you've tried to figure something out, you have not been able to get over that hump. You're gonna get over that hump. And it's got to do with some sort of the confidence, the feeling good about yourself. I forgot to mention, when the sun, when we start off this week, the sun is trying the south node and sextile the north node, which it was last week. What does that mean? Making peace with the past gives you courage to make waves in the future. And that's what this is. So there's some sort of harmony or information that comes in to settle things out where you come from and then it in, encourages you to take action. It's like now you feel like you you're you're sort of validated or or invigorated to take action because that stuff is is solved. It's cleared up. It's it's fixed or it's gotten better or the answers have come in and now you know now you know what action to take. This has been plaguing you for a while. The seven of pentacles and seven of cups is really shitty energy. It's a it's an energy of not not knowing, being distracted, having too much in your head and not being able to figure things out because every answer is the wrong answer. There is that and it's been causing a tremendous burden on your back. So you let me know in the comments below what is this that's going on in your life because that's where the breakthrough comes and where you're finally going to be able to take some action and move forward feel forward movement again knight of wands could even mean that you're feeling younger again you feel like those joints that were achy and cracky don't ache this week it's sort of like a healing experience going on in um in Pisces for you adjustments are required <laughs> like chiropractic adjustment but that's what it says adjustments are required what kind of adjustments are required what kind of adjustments please maybe you can tell me just blunt just be blunt guy what kind of adjustments king of pentacles when it comes to your business so it's like make make room because there's money coming in or there's adjustments that you're making legally to your business or business partnerships or um, making adjustments into how you work and the process of your work and now you're willing to do it. It's like, uh, maybe I don't have to spend so much time at work. This is like certainly money that would secure you enough to allow you to be able to focus on 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 things that you love or, or putting your attention into things that you care about this is a sense of really having your life under control or maybe taking control of a business opportunity of your workplace something like that yeah you have this a strength card has come out so you're ready for it you're prepared um, yeah it's it's like time to take lead or somebody sees you as the best bet for something a sense of somebody has a lot of confidence in you but i think this is you taking charge or in some ways say you're already a boss hiring somebody to do some work for you knowing you can trust them knowing you can afford them and clearing up some time then to do more things that you want to pay attention to and things that you love it's those kind of adjustments that you're going to be able to make Finally now, because you've come over that hump and you've figured out the solution to some problem that has been getting at you for some time. Okay, okay, let's be more specific. Take me on Leo's journey. The moon card is here. Maybe it concerns a Pisces or that this was just something shocking or, okay, we have the tower. So we have the moon and the tower. So this is a, this is hidden. It's a hidden shocker. <laughs> I gotta now it's like reading within a reading can you tell me more about this God what what is this people were hiding feelings from you or so they were hiding something that is going to make you get married or like like you weren't sure okay so that that was actually hidden on me that hid beneath here you have the four of wands which is marriage or celebration or happiness but you didn't know you didn't know it was gonna make you this happy or you didn't know there was feelings. Maybe you thought somebody wasn't interested in you. It doesn't make necessarily mean for romance sake, 
So there's a lot of romance in the air with Venus, but it could be money. It could be business. You didn't know somebody had feelings for you or was interested in you. This is a shocker. This is also a discovery of secrets coming out. Something happens to make those secrets come out so that you you are able then to realize this, this sort of indifference wasn't really indifference. It's actually some place that you belong or somebody that you belong with. Um... <laughs> Uh, we got a lot more information. Okay. First of all, what do you mean? But what is this moon in this tower? There's a full moon coming. There's a full moon coming in about a week and a half from now. I think it's March 7th. And it's a full moon in Virgo. So I think you're going to get a real shocker. Or you're going to shock people. Maybe you're surprising everybody. Hey, I'm pregnant. Hey, I'm getting married. Hey, I'm moving. You know, it's like... There's some sort of, but it's, it's, it's good news. It, it marks a completion and a celebration. So what is this, please? Why aren't you telling me? You're strong. You know what it's saying to me? It's like now you're strong enough. Your burdens and your struggles, like all that stuff you couldn't figure out, all those months, maybe seven months, maybe seven years of not nothing happening, nothing happening, not being able to figure something, whatever, whatever. It just, it was like grinding through that and pushing yourself through that. God gave that to you to make you strong. And that's that Chiron energy. So as soon as Venus drops on Chiron, that's I think Thursday. Oh boy. Is it going to start to shine and bubble over and make you really happy? Because it's going to make the pain worth it. It's catharsis for the pain. A sense of this is why it all happened to prepare me for what I need to have strength for now, which is abundance that you would not have been able to carry or maybe even recognize without having gone through all those trials and tribulations. Um, what is the tower though? Abandonment? somebody left you when you didn't realize it what is the tower it has something to do with somebody left you you didn't realize it but it really hurt you badly you suffered a great deal you didn't see it coming so that has to do with the hardship you went through maybe all of a sudden getting fired all of a sudden getting dumped all of a sudden getting hurt it's like it's like all of a sudden there's just a sudden ending where you feel really abandoned and sideswiped or that's what happened and I guess you never understood why it happened or it's going to happen now. Is that what's going to happen now? This is, I think this is why it surprises you that all of a sudden there's happiness here. That was the tower. I think that's what you were dealing with. Okay. The lovers is here. Somebody had to leave you or somebody had to leave you for you to be open to whoever is coming into your life now. It could have been a Gemini. It could have been a Gemini that hurt you or a Gemini that finally had room to come into your life. Either way, the lover's here. The lover's is here. And that means that this pain and suffering and the ending that made you feel completely abandoned and alone and used is what paved the way for this ridiculous bliss that you're experiencing now. In fact, for some of you, it may be recognizing or realizing that they didn't abandon you. They weren't not interested in you. It's just the message finally comes through now. It's like message in a bottle kind of shit. Like the message was on its way for maybe years. And it's finally reaching you now. There's a heartbreak here. Heartbreak. Heartbreak about a lover. You were so upset and hurt because you were so attracted to or you thought this was such a perfect match. What is this? That's what the tower is about. This is These are clarifiers. I think intuitively you saw it coming and you just decided, you, in, you fought through it. You fought through it. And this is the time for the victory and success that comes after fighting through it. This is when the stars align. This is a sense of, yeah, having fought through it and broken through the delusion and broken through the craziness and realized why the universe puts you through it's like you ever hear that expression of now I know why my all my other relationships now that I met you I know why all the other relationships didn't work out it doesn't have to be relationships it could be jobs it could be it's just some crazy cycle in your life that felt like a prolonged tornado it ends 
and suddenly you realize why it happened to begin with. That's what it's saying. Let's go to the extended because I cannot wait. I'll see you guys there.